Paul Little joins us now to tell us all about his new book, Love Letters to the Landscape. It's his latest work, 54 New Zealanders write about the places in Aotearoa closest to their hearts, including our very own Mike Puru, who features Gore. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. Uh, first of all, tell us about the book. Why did you decide to do this labour of love? Because one morning my wife said to me, look at this thing, here's a book where people have written about nice places, you should do that. And she was absolutely right. I took it a little bit further because we made it a book with big pictures and little pictures and everybody had to have their own picture of themselves in the place. So that made it complicated, but it's made it different and it's come up real nice. It's come up real nice. How did you choose the people to use for this book? More randomly than you might like to think I might, <laughs> and I might want to have to admit. And, and, you, know, you would think I would have had to go from north to south and, and balance everything out. But mm. I just asked people, his name sort of popped into my head and I thought they will be interesting. And fortunately they were, nearly all of them. Um, no, absolutely all of them, Mike, really. <laughs> Um, and fortunately, no two people chose the same place. That right. was always in the back of my head. I thought, what am I going to do if somebody says, yeah, I want to do you know, Thorn Bay as well? Uh, mm -hmm. But nobody did. And so it just shows how various the country is, how many you know, places people had to choose from that it came out like that. And it's interesting because you say that uh, everyone had to have a photo of themselves in that place, which sounds easy, but that wasn't quite so easy as you thought. It wasn't. There were um, People would say, yeah, of course I have. And you would think, well, of course you do. It's your favourite place. Naturally, you've got a picture there. Um, but no, there were, there were aunts and uncles up and down the country sent to look through attics and suitcases <laughs> and find I mean, But your picture, I mean, is a conspicuously, you know, significant one oh, and, yeah. and rather poignant, as you might like to, to tell people. Well, well no, and, you know, the, the picture I chose was a picture of our family about 24 hours after our house had burned down to the ground. And, you know, can I just say, Paul, I was so proud to be part of this because I guess in such a beautiful book, you're telling a story, you've got a, a family photo that not many people have seen, and I just knew it would be in something really special that would be on bookshelves for, for years and I was just so proud to be part of it. So thank you for letting me do it. Oh, you're welcome. It's yeah. nice to hear. Um, but everybody seemed to take it, you know, pretty seriously. It's, mm. it's a nice entertaining read, but everybody made sure that they did something, you know, that was significant and was worth talking about. What I found reading bits of it is that I had it on the coffee table at home for a while and my husband picked it up and went through and he was reading about Penny Whiting. And uh, he knew, knows Penny very well, but he had no idea that she'd actually delivered horses from, from Waiheke Island down to Gisborne. She'd ridden horses with her family down there and that whole story, it was fascinating for him. Not many people know that. It's these little pieces mm. of... of mm. Uh, insight into pieces of New Zealand that, yeah. that people obviously have very dear to their hearts. It's really, really quite lovely to read. Was there a common theme, Paul, when you look through it all? Not really. A lot of people went back to childhood. They didn't have to because there was no, as you know, you know it's pretty loose. You know, got a picture of yourself somewhere and tell us somewhere you like right. uh, and why. Um, <laughs> but a lot, and many, many, many people chose places close to the sea, which I think is something, you know, particularly in New Zealand, that um, a lot of the places we feel most connected with are close to the sea. But apart from that, very wide ranging. This yes, is one of my yeah. favourites, Stacey Morrison, Kate Wadinga. Uh, just a wonderful story as well about why that's so important to her. Fantastic. Well, Stacey's very first job you know, in broadcasting. It was um, one of those, you know, Dunedin programs that they used to make an awful lot of and she got sent up to Cape Rianga. She wasn't um, the person who was passionate about um, her, you know, her Maori heritage then as she became. She went to Cape Rianga and it was just all magic. Uh, and I'm really pleased that that's there. I'm pleased that we had somebody who felt the same about Stuart Island so that we could um, at least say we went from one end of the country to the other. And that is a great thing. Look, everywhere is covered. It is such a beautiful book and it should be in every single New Zealand home. You will find that people will just pick it up and start getting engrossed in it. So much to find out. We'll come back, have a look at some more pictures, talk more about this book in just a minute. Now, Mike is in your book. Uh, we should have a look at the photo of Gore. That's the wrong Mike. Should we have a look? There it is. So what did you actually write about Gore, Mike? I haven't quite read your bit yet. Well, I'll tell you what, if you want to see the photo of my family straight after our house burned down, you have to buy the book. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I spoke about how Gore was one of those places that was big enough to have everything there, small enough to let everybody have a go, and how it really shaped me. You know, yeah. I talk a little bit too about, I guess, being one of the few Māori in Gore and how that shaped me. You know, I just, I, I moved to the North Island and things changed pretty fast, yeah. and I attributed a lot of what happened in my life to Gore and that's all written in the book. It's very cool. Um, what I also like about it, Paul, is the fact that it's not just the big places, is it? I know that there's um, there's small places that are focused on in the book too. Indeed, and, indeed. and, the, and the smallest of all is, and again, you, know, you, you ask people to write to choose somewhere, you know what they're going to say. Philip Patson said, well, I'd like to write about my deck. 
Um, <laughs> Fair and enough, he's got a nice and, deck. And he's written beautifully about his, <laughs> about his deck in Westmere. Uh, Moana Maniopoda said, well, I'd like to write about the ocean, so two-thirds two of the Earth's surface for, for, Moana's, for Moana to cover in her thousand words, uh, and then lots of places in between. So, yeah, yeah variety is the, the key to making something like this work, and you only get that really if you let people do what, what moves them. And I'm so impressed you managed to get Jordan Luck to write a few paragraphs as well. Beautiful paragraphs too. Jordan's piece was, you know, was fantastically written. Um, somewhat, you know, took took a little while to extract, but gosh, it's great. And it's about somewhere again that not many people will have heard of, but it's very special to him. And it's where, um, remember, he took his father's ashes uh, at at the end. And I was going to ask you that. Did you find that, you know, most people wrote about the place because it was beautiful, or they wrote about it because it had a memory? Um, definitely because it had a memory. I said, I want a place with an emotional connection. And I said, I don't want that place where you go and they write. And as soon as I get there, all my everyday cares and worries fall away from me because I could easily have had 54 people writing yeah, that right. and, and then some. So um, w we tried to make it something quite different. And Susie Cato, her place, she chose? She chose the beach um, you know, that she loved. A lot of people right, did it. choose beaches. Yes, and, and Anika, Anika Mar as well. I've just yeah. seen that shot there. But see, there's a little bit more to Anika's one because what she really writes about is meeting her father for the first time, um, who oh. was from up the Hokianga, uh, and she was uh, an adolescent, I think she was 12 or so, and this guy, as she puts it, pulled up in this Maori as car and said, <laughs> hey, I'm your dad, and that led to you know, the establishing of a relationship um, you know, that she had never had before. So, again, yeah, beautiful story, but just comes out of saying, you know, write about somewhere special. Who's the most fascinating person in this book for you? Oh, apart from Mike. <laughs> Sorry, apart from really? Mike. Apart from, and my wife. And your wife. Yeah. And your son. And my son. Oh, yeah, yeah. Joel at all. Yeah. Yeah. Apart, think, from them. I, apart from them. Apart from them. Like, everybody is fantastic. There, there's no duds there. Um, because, you know, at least I chose people. You know, you choose people who you think are interesting. They usually are. There aren't many people with a, a bit of, um, you know, public awareness and profile who don't have something, you know, in the core of them mm. that, that's got them to that point. Uh, and this has touched on that. And not only beautiful stories, but beautiful photographs as well. Did you get out with your camera and take them all, or do you get yeah, somebody else? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if they were... It would be a very different book. <laughs> it would be a very different book. <laughs> if they were all by me. Oh, um, there are none by me, but there are... Um, I mean, the things I love and the things I think people will really like are the, are the family shots, yeah. you know, the little snapshots yeah. that people have, and, you know, you can tell they've, got, they've had the old rounded corners Absolutely. on. Absolutely. But then, yeah, we've, we've used the, the big pictures big to make it something, you know, that you want to dwell on and, and enjoy like it's that. It's the family shots, and I think it's the stories as well. Mm. People are going to mm. love it. It's a book that you can read, and the stories in it are quite incredible. Paul Little's gorgeous book, Love Letters to the Landscape, is available right now. Thank you so much, Paul. Yeah, Welcome. thank you, Thank you. Paul. Thanks for being like part of it, too.